come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I am going to share an unboxing and first look at Dungeons and Dragons Curse of Strahd revamped. Yes, it's scary kids, scary. And I will crack open this coffin right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, we are going to unbox and take a first look at Curse of Strahd Revamped in just a moment. But first, I do want to remind you, if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that notification bell. Because not only will it let you know when I upload videos such as this, it will also inform you when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs Monday through Thursday evenings right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. All right, without further ado, we are taking a peek at Dungeons & Dragons Curse of Strahd revamped from Wizards of the Coast. Chris Perkins was the lead designer on this. We will kind of take a peek at some of the credits as well. This is a special limited edition box set. It is going to hit stores on October 20th. It does carry an MSRP of $99.99. Swing on over to the other camera and let's get our first look at Curse of Strahd revamped. First thing I'm gonna do is I am going to take the shrink wrap off. I have to mention, this actually arrived about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> so I didn't think I was actually gonna see a copy of this for review, simply because this is a limited edition release and you know it does carry a hundred dollar price tag on it but the fine folks over at wizards of the coast were kind enough to provide me with this review copy so thank you very much so let's flip this on over i'm not going to read everything off the back but i will give you kind of an idea what's going on it says bury yourself in gothic horror under raging storm clouds the vampire count strad van zarevich stands silhouetted against the ancient walls of Castle Ravenloft. Rumbling thunder pounds the castle spires. The wind's howling increases as he turns his gaze down toward the village of Borovia. Far below, yet not beyond his keen eyesight, a party of adventurers has just entered his domain. Strahd's face forms the barest hint of a smile as his dark plan unfolds. He knew they were coming, and he knows why they came all according to his plan. A lightning flash rips through the darkness, but Strahd is gone. Only the howling of the wind fills the midnight air. The master of Castle Ravenloft is having guests for dinner, and you are invited. This is for use with 5th edition. Dungeons & Dragons, you do require the Player's Handbook, Monster Manual, and Dungeon Master's Guide to utilize this. So this has this strip on it. So let's see if we can slide that strip on off without damaging it. There we go. Looks like we got it. Okay, cool. I will mention, wow. <laughs> okay, so that is a very cool looking cover to it here. I was going to say that this has quite a bit of heft to it. This is, uh, I get the feeling we're gonna see quite a bit inside this box. Of course, uh, the back told us what we're gonna find, but why read that when we can open this up and take a look? Aha, so here we have an image of Strahd himself. Looks like he's relaxing in his coffin. And then on the back, we have his stat block. So that's pretty cool. I will zoom in on some of these things as well as we take a peek. 
But first thing we're gonna do is let's see what is in this cool coffin-like box. So we've got that. We have the Curse of Strahd revamped. So we've got a nice little pull tab here, little fabric tab. So this is going to include, I believe this is 220 pages. This is, oh, actually it's not a hard cover. It is soft cover. It is uh, kind of revised a little bit from Curse of Strahd, the original adventure when it came out. I don't know all the things that have been changed. I can tell you that the treatment of the gypsies is different. So that is a plus. I will talk about what is changed in this when I do my review. I originally had reviewed Curse of Strahd when it came out. It actually, at that time, it was pretty much my favorite fifth edition adventure that had arrived. I still do really, really like it. I definitely love the sandbox nature of it as well. So we've got a Taraka deck. So this is kind of the tarot card deck that is used in the game. Uh, looks like we've got something else in here. So we're gonna take a look at all of that. All right, let's lift this up. So we've got a storage box down below. What have we got under here? Looks like, just double check and see what's in there. All right, so that is what we've got. So I guess, uh, I thought there was a set of dice, to be honest with you. I don't know, we'll find out. But I'm just gonna lift everything out of here just to make sure that we are not somehow missing something. Doesn't look like it, nope. Everything is in here. And once again, this is not out in stores just yet. It is arriving on October 20th. Okay, so we've got that. Slide this back in here as well. And put this top back on there also. Okay, so that is the box. I'm just gonna put that here and let's allow you to get another good look at the actual cover here. Pretty sweet. Very, very cool, like that. Uh, I think, gosh, now off the top of my head, I'm probably gonna be wrong. I think this artwork is provided by Hydro 74. I am not positive though, but that does seem like some of the uh, alternate art covers of some of the D and D releases that we see, so, but that that is one sturdy box. I will, I'll tell you that much. So I'm going to push that off to the side for right now. Okay, so we've got the truck to rock uh, deck, the Curse of Strahd. This is a game master screen. I do know that. I am not sure. Oh, I I know what these are. We we're supposed to get some postcards to actually send to your players to invite them to play. So we will save the book for last. Let's take a look at the Taroka deck as well as the postcards. These postcards are also sealed. Welcome to Barovia. Wish you weren't here. Okay, so we will zoom in a bit. Let's uh, kind of get a, get a feel for where we're gonna be as far as when we kind of do a quick page through of the book. Ah, it's a little too close. There we go, that's good. I think that'll be all right when we do the page through and we take a look at the Game Master screen. Let's go back to the Taroka deck. Kind of, kind of cool looking there. And everything's shrink wrapped here. Good thing I got the hobby knife handy. Oops. So, uh, we got a bit of a kind of cool finish on the back of these. I will point out that these cards are fairly light card stock. So we've got the artifact 
We've got the Beast. We've got Broken One, Dark Lord, Dungeon, the Seer, the Ghost, the Executioner, the Horseman, the Innocent. I do definitely like the artwork. In the original Curse of Strahd, we did get the Taroka cards, but you basically had to print, you had to like photocopy them or scan them and print them out yourself. Here we actually have the cards, the transmuter, the diviner, enchanter, arbiter, elementalist, evoker, illusionist, necromancer, conjurer, warrior, avenger, Definitely like the artwork. The Paladin. The Soldier. The Mercenary. The Myrmidian. The Bazaka. Bazaka. Hooded One. Dictator. Torturer. Rogue. Swashbuckler. Philanthropist. Traitor. Merchant. Guild Member. Beggar. Thief. Tax Collector, the Miser, Priest, and we got the Monk, and of course, we do see the value as well as the suit, so there are different suits to the Taroka deck, the Missionary, the Healer, the Shepherd, the Druid, the Anarchist, the Charlatan, the Bishop, and the traitor. There we go. So there is the Taroka deck. So actually the size of these cards, these cards are a little bit larger than say like a tarot card deck would be just a, just a touch. Do you want to point out, I don't have massively large hands, <laughs> but I don't have tiny hands either, but, but these are good size. These are pretty good size here. All right, we'll put these back in the tuck box. So let's see what we've got as far as these postcards. I think there's four different postcards. So we have the welcome to Barovia. Wish you weren't here. Old Bone Grinder. Dream pastry is made fresh every day. So we've got four of those. St. Marco, the Abbey of St. Markovia. The best care this side of the Bellinox. Got three of those. And then we have spend a night in death house. Stay as long as you like. Longer even. Okay, so we've got those. So kind of Kind of funny. So you can hand these out. You could actually, honestly, really mail these to players, too. So these are legitimate postcards. All right, so we've got those. Let's move those over here. So then here, Shrink Wrapped, we've got Curse of Strahd revamped. We also have the Game Master screen, and there should be, a, I believe there's like a 20-page monster book is what we've got here shrink wrap together. So let's let's get that on opened. So I'm always trying to make sure that I don't scratch up anything or box anything. All right. I should get this. I will do a quick paste through for Curse of Strad revamped as well. I got to admit, I'm a little surprised it's not a hardcover. I would have thought this would have been a hardcover book because the reality is you really don't see softcover releases for D&D. Everything is almost always in hardcover. So we'll save that for last. So we've got Creatures of Horror. Like I said, I believe there are. this is 20 pages. We've got a guide to the Taroka deck, I think. See, this is what, yes, yeah, so this is what we originally got in Curse of Strahd. This is what exactly what it was 
And like I said, you either had to scan them or figure out a way to utilize them. Right off the top of my head, I could have swore, I seem to remember that there was a way for you to actually utilize dice for the Taroka decks, or, or deck, singular, I should say. So we've got some handouts from the Tome of Strahd. Journal of Rudolf van Richten. So we've got some letters. We've got Strahd's invitation. So we've got a few handouts here. Oh, yeah, that's right. We've got a map. Nice finish to the, the map here. As you can see, you're picking up some glare from the light. So this has been treated. It's not just paper. So on one side, we're going to have a map of Barovia. Kind of give you an idea with various different locations. Then we've got some, some area maps as well. So we've got a map of the village. The main village of Barovia. There are some other locales as well. Aha, then here we've got the map of Castle Ravenloft. Flip that over, so give you a look at these. Pretty nice. Very cool. So this is poster map size, as you can tell. Let's take a peek at that. So here's the Game Master screen. And it's got sort of a kind of a, yeah, a bit of a muted look to it. That's actually kind of cool. I like that. Daytime random encounters in Barovia. Nighttime random encounters. Reading the Taroka cards. Uh, we've got some, some new rules as far as jumping, concentration. Here are our conditions, which we normally will see on the Game Master screens. Some more of the conditions here. Setting your DCs and tracking them. Different skills and their associated abilities. And some travel information as well. The Mists of Ravenloft, some Barovian names. Nice. I do like the like lower Game Master screens, Dungeon Master screen in this case. I definitely do dig that as opposed to like this. I like the landscape style better. I, I gotta be honest, I very rarely use a Game Master screen for any, any of the games. I actually, <laughs> I've mentioned this a few times when I'm talking about role-playing games. I usually have a, a chair I've pulled up next to me. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I usually have a box top so that I have uh you know, my little, that's kind of my dice tray and everything. Cool. I do like, I actually really do like the kind of muted style to this. Very nice. Very cool. Definitely like that. All right. So let's take a look. I'm going to page this rather quickly so we can get a look here. Well, I got to say the, the binding is pretty nice on this. So we've got some credits here. So I thought Chris Perkins was a lead designer and Tracy and Laura Hickman who created Ravenloft, they created Strahd, were creative consultants on this as well. We do have all the different illustrators. So one thing I always love is I love all the, all the great artwork that we see in the D&D books here. So we're gonna go through here real quick. Like I said, I believe this is 220 pages. So we had a bit of an uh, a forward introduction, Marks of Horror, talking about uh, different aspects of a horror role-playing game as opposed to, say, what you would do in a uh, standard like high fantasy. So it's a little bit different. So we get uh, into the mists here. Uh, I'm just trying to center up the book here for everybody. So it's kind of kind of centered here going through as i mentioned before i definitely do appreciate the sa more sandbox 
aspect to Curse of Strahd. So I'm sure it's not changed for Curse of Strahd revamped either. So there are a lot of uh, smaller encounters and things like that that'll pop up throughout. That's why we see, see these here. Of course, it's also utilizing that Taroka deck. We're just going to zip on through here. So essentially, there are a few different hooks that you can use to get the adventurers to Barovia. Uh, the main one is simply that the they they find themselves having their fortunes told by a fortune teller. And then next thing they know, they are uh, in the mists. There's these mists that that basically block anybody from leaving Barovia and the uh, the players, the characters find themselves in these mists and they emerge from the mists and they are in Barovia. One aspect of this adventure too that you, as a, as a dungeon master, you really got to focus on is that it's gloomy, <laughs> right? Not that there's no happiness or hope whatsoever in Barovia, but that it is kind of downtrodden and there's just a, a, a heavy weight that just lays upon everyone who's essentially trapped in this land because of Strahd. All right, just zipping on through here pretty quickly. This is also an adventure where the big bad, if you're gonna, if you're gonna run this to really get the, the most bang for your buck out of it, the big bad shows up quite a bit. That it's you're not just waiting until the final chapter of the adventure for the characters to be introduced to Strahd. You in reality, you, you want to try to introduce him very early in the campaign and have him show up from time to time. It's the best way to, to really establish a big bad is uh, have the, the player characters, have the adventurers encounter him and uh, from time to time. And that Strahd is, uh, you know, keeping an eye out on the adventurers. All right, so kind of zipping on through. So we got a lot of different different maps in here, different encounters as well. One aspect of this adventure that's that's pretty sweet is it's not linear. As I mentioned before, it's very sandboxy. And a lot of these encounters, a lot of these chapters can take place in whatever order you want. In fact, there is an item that the player characters are searching for. And I'll talk more about this when I, when I do a review of Curse of Strahd revamped. And it's random where it's going to be located. You actually use the Taroka deck to, uh, to determine where it's going to, what, what the locale is. So it's, that's kind of cool too. So one person's campaign for Curse of Strahd is completely different than other people's campaigns as well. Much more so than most Dungeons and Dragons adventures, because a lot of D&D adventures these days are relatively linear. They're not a complete railroad, but they are relatively linear. All right, just kind of zipping on through here. So there is a lot of gaming content in this adventure. That's one of the reasons why when I reviewed it a few years ago, I really, really did like this. I, I really did dig the sandbox nature. I like the fact that you don't wait until, you know, the big finale to unveil Strahd and his machinations. And that, uh, that you're really, as a game master, you're looking at, you can put this together and put these pieces together in whatever order and however you feel best suits your campaign. All right, so we got some appendixes here. Of course, normally, you we would have kind of a bestiary at the end of the book here, but we actually have the Creatures of Horror book that we're going to take a peek at real quick. So we got some treasures. 
And then we've got another view of Castle Ravenloft. That clocked in, what, 220? 223 to be exact. So there we go. So that is the revamped book for Curse of Strahd. Let's take a look at this Creatures of Horror book here. So it's going to give us uh, all the uh, the major creatures, and I think we get the major NPCs in here too for the adventure, if I remember correctly. But then again, it's very possible that these are just, we get uh, some, some creatures in this bestiary or bestiary, however you want to pronounce it, that aren't actually included in the adventure because it is creatures of horror. It's not necessarily... Curse of Strahd bestiary. So, taking a quick peek through here. Madam Eva, that is the uh, fortune teller. Definitely dig the artwork as well. Very nicely done. Very nicely done as we're zipping on through. So, another reason why I'm kind of moving these books around a little bit is... Um, yeah, so it's... Much more difficult for people to take screenshots <laughs> as I sip it on through, right? So, all right. So let's put all this stuff back into the box. Once again, let's zoom back out a tad. There we go. Ah, I zoomed out a little too far. <laughs> Got all the shrink wrap laying around. <laughs> so let's open this back up. Hey, look, let's take a look. Whoops, let's take a look at the back of this here for a second, because I could have swore. No, there isn't. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. I thought there was a set of dice, but <laughs> there isn't. And that's okay. I got plenty of dice. I don't need more dice. Once again, get a nice peek at the box here. And all right, come on. Okay, so we'll put Creatures of Horror in here. Let's make sure we've got these. Let's put the Game Master screen, the map. Put the handouts. Our guide to the Taroka deck. And Curse of Strahd revamped. And here we will put our postcards and our Taroka deck. Flip this back over and put Strahd back on top. All right, so that is everything that we find when we take everything from Dungeons and Dragons, Curse of Strahd revamped outside the box. But swing on over to the other camera and I will wrap up. All right, so there you have it. Pretty cool. I definitely, I like, I definitely dig the coffin shaped box for this. It's pretty wild. So that is Curse of Strahd revamped. And of course, I will have a review of this box set before it hits stores. It's supposed to hit stores October 20th. It does carry an MSRP of $99.99. And obviously enough, it is from Wizards of the Coast. So stay tuned. I will have a full review in the very near future. All right, that's it for this time out. Once again, let me remind you, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already, and if you do, ring that notification bell, because not only will it let you know when I upload videos such as this one, ugh, as I smack myself in the head with the box, it'll also let you know when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs right here on YouTube, Monday through Thursday nights as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. All right, so once again, that's it for this time out. Stay tuned. I will have that review very, very soon. And of course, as I like to close out the videos, well, maybe not necessarily like to close out the videos, but as I have been closing out my videos during this pandemic, unfortunately, here's hoping that 
you be smart, and stay safe. See you next time. Oh, you're still here. Well, once again, thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, if you'd like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, click right here. And of course, if you want to see one of the latest episodes of The Daily Dope, click right on up here. And if you want to roll the dice, take your chances, see what YouTube thinks you might like from the channel, give a click right here. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. And I'll see you next time.